Welcome back. This week, as I mentioned, Senate Republicans, they blocked a measure that would have overhauled one of the nation's security agencies' phone call programs. The bill known as the USA Freedom Act, it would have ended the agency's ability to collect telephone records of U.S. citizens in bulk. It would have required the NSA to ask a communications company for records of a specific person when investigating a terrorism case rather than indiscriminately sweeping up all the records. Now, for one, Republican Senator Mitch McConnell, he worked very hard to kill the bill. He said the program was a vital tool towards fighting terrorism. However, on the other side, Democratic Senator Patrick Leahy, who introduced the law, disagrees. Leahy, Chair's Judiciary Committee, uh, says the NSA has never been able to show that the call tracking program has actually stopped a terror plot against the United States. Now, others argue that the program violates the Fourth Amendment rights. And here's a reminder of it. It cites that the rights of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath and affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, the goal of the provision, obviously, to protect people's right to privacy and freedom from arbitrary intrusions by, among others, the feds. Then there's also the Privacy Act of 1974. Trust me, I'm getting to an end here. This states that no agency shall disclose any record which is contained in a system of records by any means of communication to any person or to another agency except pursuant to written request by or with the prior written consent of individual who the record pertains. I sound like one of those, uh, you know, copyright things on TV. However, law enforcement inquiries, they're exempt from that. And there have been a whole number of cases, folks, involving the feds that put your privacy rights and also mitigating protection in question. Take the case of the U.S. versus Jones. Government attached a GPS device to a person's private vehicle to track the movement. However, Supreme Court found the government was in violation then of the Fourth Amendment. Then there's reports of a secret spy program where the government literally flies planes overhead and zeroes in on your smartphone, tracking movements of thousands of unsuspecting Americans. Authorities say the practice designed to track down fugitives, killers, rapists, and other bad guys. Former FBI Director Bob Mueller, he's admitted that the government spies on Americans with drones. And don't think you always even have privacy at your own house. The feds can even use your fridge to spy on you. I'm not making this up. If you have a new refrigerator and link to the Internet, that's even fair game. We talked about phony towers, cell towers that are actually, okay, I can keep going on and on. I've talked to these guys about it, and I'll start with you. The There is... Um, almost a resignation, I think, from the public that says, you know what, if I got, you know, one of these uh, cell phones, I accept that, you know, I, I don't have privacy. People can follow it around, but I'm okay with that because, hey, either I've got nothing to hide or B, it's just the way it is. I don't think the public has a full grasp on the scope of this um, and how it's not just the feds, but even, um, you know, commercial entities taking your private information. But has this already been decided and basically through lack of national debate, we're just basically resigned to where we are right now and Patriot Act or whatever else we want to call it, that's just the new world? I so hope that's not true. I mean, this is, this, uh, the Republican defeat of this bill is really, really a setback because the bulk, the government's bulk collection of phone records is an enormous violation of individual privacy rights. Just be, somehow I think people think if it's bulk, if the government's getting all the records, then, then it's not a violation of my privacy that they have mine Because they're doing to. it to everybody. But imagine if it were your medical records. Would it be okay if the government decided it was gonna collect all of the medical records of everyone? No, it would still be a violation of something completely private, which is, mm. which are your medical right. records. Like HIPAA, it, it, you know, for me, Jason, it, it's funny, and, I, and I'll, I'll bring these guys in this in a second, so we've had this debate back and forth, but I, I, whenever I have this debate with people outside, I'm like, listen, we, we learned this with the FISA course. You can have, you, maybe we can't have it all, but there can be limits or checks and balances without taking away you know, national security uh, apparatuses from doing their job. You can't have some checks and balances, but I think people say after 9-11, do whatever the heck they gotta do. Um, where do you fall on this? Well, 
you know, I think that's the balance, the balance of individual privacy and, and national security. The, the use of this is, is being used to protect all of us. And, and it's being used in a manner that is uh, approved by the legislature. Hopefully they're documenting everything. That's what they should be doing. There should be judicial oversight. Uh, oversight. There should be review. And if, as long as that's going on, do we really have an expectation of privacy in everything that we're sending across the Internet wires? I, I don't believe so. I don't feel one. And, uh, and I'm willing to certainly give and that And I up. hear that. But, but then, Doug, um, I, I always explain to folks about a national security letter. Um, and after 9-11, more than 10,000 of these went out. And people say, all right, what's that? I could decide without warrant, without probable cause, that Doug Von Ois looks like a, a shady character. Here's what I can do. I can go to his partner in his law firm or his employer. I can go to his bank, get all the records. I can find out what books you're taking out of the library and go down there. I can find out all your financial transactions, see what you're, what you're buying, what you're investing, whatever. And if, if any of those folks that I demand that information so much as say a peep to you, they're criminally here exposed. You'll never know that you're being investigated. They don't have to show a scintilla of cause that I'm looking into you. They can just do it. To me, that's scary. Um, and it's not like it's happened a couple times. This happened indiscriminately um, in certain cases after 9-11. Maybe your last name sounded wrong. Maybe you had a, a couple friends here that, you know, they had some question marks about. I don't know, Doug. I don't know if the public cares anymore about this, and it's just me and a few guys, and I know you care about this stuff, but I just think we never had this debate in this country, and it's a false choice that you can't have both. Well, I think that the public is overwhelmed. And you've got to remember, this is happening, this was happening prior to 9-11. This isn't something that started with the Patriot Act. These, nas these uh, national security yeah. letters, this was happening prior to that. They're going out. People don't realize that it's building on itself. It's constantly building. And nobody's ever saying that you can't go out and get information. If you have reasonable cause to believe that something's happening, you can always go to a judge, ask the judge to consider the information, get a warrant. What they're really asking for is they're asking for to be able to go out and get information without anybody checking what they're doing. That's what they're really asking for. And if you look at, you put up the Fourth Amendment before, that's what the Fourth Amendment was saying. You can't, no search or seizure unless you go to an independent a, a judge and say, hey, listen, I want to see this stuff, this stuff. And that's what they're trying to avoid. People think we're trying to, you're trying to say you're not entitled to the information. You may be, but you've got to take certain procedural steps to keep the integrity of the system. Is your biggest worry that a government agency is going to go rogue? Is it more that all of a sudden commercial uh, agencies, search engines, whatever, are going to take your information and, and give it to the, forget about the feds, they give it to anybody else? Is it that this is going to funnel into criminal trials that you guys are working on? Where do you worry where this goes? Uh, look, I think that in this day and age, with, with the terrorism and, and the fact that we are, in certain instances, under attack, I think that the general public is willing to give up a little bit of that privacy in order to secure that we're protected. I think it's a moving target all the time. What worries me, what concerns me, is this overarching claim for the right to just get everything they want, regardless of whether there's any suspicion or anything. We've talked on the show yeah. many times of how technology has presented a problem and how, you know, with the mm. internet, uh, everything's out well, there. But give but me the wrap. I got a quick question. You got uh, kids here um, who are young adults. Do they even care about this? I know I, I, I might care. The five of us might care of varying degrees. Do the young 20s care at all? They say, hey, whatever. They're going to get whatever they're going to get. You know something? I don't think they care because they're not thinking, but it's even worse than that. We all know that adults put things over the Internet, emails, our clients. Including I mean, attorneys, it just doesn't by the matter. way. <laughs> just, nobody <laughs> thinks about the fact that what they're putting out there can be read by anybody. So I think it's just laziness. And, and not caring. I do. Well, on that uplifting note here, <laughs> uh, when we come back, a DA faces jail time after withholding evidence in a case. Um, is this a new precedent going forward? Do we think that this should happen more often uh, than it is? Or, you know what, does this make it even tougher for a DA to do his or her job? We'll talk about that after this. Sure,